بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم 5090 نومبر 23 کوشچن پیپر 21 اینڈ دس از دی سیکنڈ ویڈیو ان وچ وی ار گوئنگ ٹو بی ڈوئنگ کوشچن 5 ٹو کوشچن 8 ناؤ سٹارٹنگ وتھ کوشچن نمبر 5 فگر 5.1 شوز ٹو اسٹرکچرز فاؤنڈ ان دی ہیومن ڈائجیسٹو سسٹم ا ٹوتھ اینڈ ا سلائیوری گلینڈ ناٹ ٹو اسکیل فگر 5.1 ائیڈنٹیفائی دی ٹائپ اف ٹوتھ شون ان دی ڈائیگرام وٹ از اٹ لائک لکس لائک ا مولر You could have said a molar, you could have said a premolar. Then it says name the outer layer of the tooth. It's called enamel. Outer layer of the tooth. It can't be crown. Crown is a part which is, uh, which is, which is not even, we don't even use this word. But I guess a lot of students wrote that. Then it says explain how the tooth and the salivary gland contribute to digestion in different ways tooth and the salivary gland contribute to digestion in different ways so tooth is physical digestion uh, you can say breaks up the food into smaller pieces please do not use the word chewing you can be chewing gum for the whole day and nothing will happen to it what is that movie the charlie and the chocolate factory that girl keeps on having that chewing gum and she hides it behind her ear and she keeps it i don't know for how many days so the for the tooth you're going to talk about physical digestion breaks up the food you can say grinds the food into smaller pieces and uh, the salivary gland then you would say is that it is uh, important in chemical digestion because saliva contains an enzyme called amylase and the amylase breaks down the starch to maltose So four marks, you got to give me two marks for the tooth thingy because it says explain how the tooth and the salivary gland. So there's two marks for this and there's two marks for this. That's why there are four marks. So always read the question carefully, look at the marks and then think and then write. So you can see there weren't many points. For tooth, there are only two points, physical digestion in one mark, or you can say the second mark so grinds the food into smaller pieces or breaks up the food into smaller pieces. You could have said that. Slivery gland, you could have only said three points. Chemical digestion uh, produces uh, amylase. Uh, amylase is an enzyme. You could have said enzyme as well. That could have got your mark and starch is broken down to maltose. So if you didn't remember the word amylase, you could have even said salivary glands produce an enzyme and that breaks down the starch to maltose. So very easy marking scheme, very, uh, I'm sure everybody knows these points. Now coming to the B part of the question, the stomach wall produces different substances that are involved in digestion. Name two of these substances and explain how they are involved in digestion. So number one, it produces hydrochloric acid. And this is the optimum pH for the enzymes that work in the stomach. The enzyme that works in the stomach is pepsin. And what does pepsin do? It breaks down the protein into peptides. So four marks and four mark scheme points. A hormone called gastrin stimulates cells in the stomach wall to release the substances involved in digestion. Some of the gastrin is produced in the duodenum. state how the gastrin reaches the stomach very easy in the blood you can see in the blood or you can say in the blood plasma better so blood plasma is a better word to use because blood is plasma plus all the cells in it so how the gastrin reaches the stomach So hydrochloric acid, optimum pH for enzyme action in the stomach. The enzyme that is produced in the stomach is pepsin and the pepsin does what? It breaks down the protein into peptides. Question number six, figure 6.1 shows a biological molecule. Name this molecule. Wow, that was a difficult one, DNA. Or you could have said deoxyribonucleic acid. Describe three features of the structure of this molecule. Three features. Now you can look at it from the diagram and you get an idea of the three features. It's not very difficult. It's double strands or you can say two strands. Then it's a double helix. Then it's made up of nucleotides. 
then the strands are held together by bonds between the bases and there is complementary base pairing a always pairs with t and c with g it is made up of elements carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and phosphorus that's why it's got the sugar phosphate backbone so you the lot of points any three out of these So the three features of the structure of this molecule is double strands, a double helix is made up of nucleotides. Strands are held together by bonds between the bases. Then there's complementary bases. A always pairs with T and C with G. I always say A at government college. So A with T has two hydrogen bonds and C with G has three hydrogen bonds. Then it is made from the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Then the B part of the question says animal and bacteria contain this molecule. Describe how the location and shape of the molecule differ in animal and bacterial cells. Now in animal cells is present in the nucleus and in the bacteria it is present in the cytoplasm. In the animal cell is present in the nucleus and in the bacteria it is just present as a circular DNA in the cytoplasm. Then in animals it is linear DNA you see because we have chromosomes. In the bacteria, it's circular. So linear in the animal cells and circular in the bacterial cells. So a bacteria will have circular DNA and animal cell will have pairs of chromosomes. 23 pairs, 20 pairs, 10 pairs, pairs of chromosomes. So in the nucleus in animal cell and in the cytoplasm in bacterial cell, uh, the shape is linear in animal cells and circular in bacterial cells. Now coming to the C part of the question, explain how this molecule controls cell function. Now that's a little difficult if you've not understood this very new in the syllabus. You see the DNA, the chromosomes contain genes and genes code for or they control the proteins that have to be made. The DNA, the sequence of bases in the DNA dictates the amino acid sequence in the protein. And those proteins could be an enzyme, could be hemoglobin, could be antibody. So how do they control cell functions? It results in the production of enzymes, it results in the production of hormones, certain cells in the body will produce the hormone adrenaline, certain cells in the body will produce the hormone insulin. So that means those genes are switched on because frankly speaking, every genetic information in all your cells is the same because every human being starts from one cell, the zygote, and the cell divides by mitosis. So all your body cells have the same genetic information, but the genes are switched on. Your bag contains all your books, physics, chemistry, bio, but in the bio class, when the bio teacher comes, well, you take out the bio book. So genes are switched on in different parts of the body. So the gene for insulin is switched on in the, in the pancreas. The gene for pepsin is switched on in the wall of the stomach, the cells of the stomach wall. So how this molecule controls cell function? So how the molecule controls for cell function contains genes, genes code for proteins, the order of bases in the DNA dictates the structure of the protein, or we can say dictates the amino acid sequence. And the example of proteins are enzymes, hemoglobin, antibody. You can also say hormones. Question number seven. A root hair cell in a plant is respiring aerobically. Name the structures within the cell that carry out aerobic respiration, mitochondria, or you could say mitochondrion. Then write the balanced symbol equation for the aerobic respiration of glucose. So C6H12O6 plus 6O2 gets you one mark and gives you 6H2O plus 6CO2 gets you the second mark. Then it says the plant experiences changing weather conditions including high temperature, heavy rain, high winds, low humidity. State the weather condition that may lead to a root hair cell respiring anaerobically and explain your answer. So heavy rain and water logging. So there's no air spaces or oxygen available. So the root will respire anaerobically. So 
So you can just read it. There's a lot of fill in the blanks. You have to give me all the symbols and you have to give me all that. So very easy five marks. Now coming to the last question, question number eight. The number of individuals in a population can vary with time. Figure table 8.1 shows the global population of humans and tigers are estimated to have changed between 70 and 2000, 1970 and 2000. So in 1970, the humans were 3.6 billion, the tigers were 35,000. Now that they are in 2006 billion human beings, there are only 5,000 tigers. Interesting. So just factors that may be causing these changes in the two populations and how the changes may be linked. So tiger populations are declining and human populations are increasing. So you just give me something which you can see from the data. So that means that the how so the production rate of humans is more and the death rate for tigers is more. So there's probably less disease, medical advances for humans, so people are living longer. And why the tiger's number decreasing, the tigers are being killed, maybe they are hunted, maybe they are poached by humans, uh, that's illegal hunting, or there is less habitat available for the tigers. The poor tigers, you are ruining their habitat, so now the tigers are dying. And there are not many left. From 35,000, they've gone down to 5,000. That's sad. Why? Because there's destruction of habitat of the tigers. Because people want to build buildings. They want to clear up the forest. And they want to start DHA phase 9 or something like that. Or barrier town phase 7. Something like that. They're going to build, they're going to construct. People are going to, they're going to, con uh, there's going to be urbanization. The uh, forests are going to be cut down. And we're going to have cities developing there. People are going to want buildings, houses, roads. And why are we killing you know, the tigers? We're killing the tigers because maybe we need them for the medicine or they are uh, trophies and you know you put their fur in the uh, in your houses or they predate farm animals so you're killing them so this is part a of the question then let's look at the part b of the question in 2010 the population of tigers had dropped to an estimated 3200 13 countries in which tigers have signed and uh, tigers live signed an agreement to dou double their tiger population by 2022. Explain why it is important to increase tiger population, suggest ways of doing this. So that is conservation uh, to prevent extinction. Then uh, we maintain biodiversity, means the number of different species that live in an area. And then we protect their habitats. Then we legally restrict their laws on hunting and poaching and people will be uh, put behind bars, then is the increased education and awareness of the public, or you can do breeding programs in which you can do captive breeding. That means you breed them in a zoo, and then the children, uh, the baby, baby tigers are then, of course, allowed to live for a few months, and then they are put back in the forest. So then you can again see that their numbers will increase. So let's look at the mark scheme. It says tiger population declining and human populations increasing. So that's one point that you took it out from the table. Then uh, you talked about the reproduction rate of uh, human beings more and death rate of the human tigers being more. Then uh, maybe there's less disease and medical advances for humans so people are living longer. Then tigers are being hunted or poached by humans. Poaching is illegal hunting. And why? Because there's less habitat available for tigers. Then you give me the reasons for the link. Reasons for the link are reasons for less tiger habitat because destruction of the habitat due to human demand for food, building, road, houses, agriculture. Then reasons for human killing tigers, maybe for the medicines, maybe there's some medicinal value in their uh, organs or their trophies or their predation of farm animals and they or we need them for the fur. So these are the things that we would be talking about. Then coming to the B part, conservation, we must do conservation measures to prevent extinction. Then the important thing is that the biodiversity must be maintained, that the number of different species that live in an area must always be maintained. We can't having everything becoming extinct because they are interdependence of food chains interdependent on one another. 
then you could have come out protecting areas or habitats uh, production of reserves or you know you can make natural reserves where people come and watch the see the animals but you can't do anything there you are not allowed to do any construction or build any roads then legal restrictions on hunting and poaching then education and making people aware of it so that they don't uh, buy stuff made of their fur and all that and then you can do captive breeding that means you can breed them in the zoos you can have uh, male and females and then you can breed them and then their you let them grow the you let the babies grow and then they mature then they are uh, put back in the forest that's called captive breeding so that completes this uh, paper and i hope this is helpful and uh, please do leave your comments and let me know how i can uh, help you in a better manner and thank you very much and uh, allah hafiz